الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I hope over the last few days you've seen this hashtag in their shoes and this is a hashtag in which we're trying to push a, a serious campaign that is unfortunately now endemic within the Muslim community but before I get into that particular campaign, I'd like to sort of take a few steps back and talk about the whole concept of marriage. We know from the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in that he said, An nikahum in sunnati, faman lam ya'lam bis sunnati falaysa minni, wa tazawwadu, fa inni mukathirun bikumul umam. That the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that an nikahum in sunnati, that marriage, the whole concept of marriage is from my sunnah. And that person who does not act upon my sunnah, then he is not of me. So this is a quite a serious threat to say that follow my practice. This is not just a practice which is recommended. There's arguably some obligatory nature associated with it. Now, I'm not going to get into the whole discussion about the fiqh of when is it obligatory and when is it mubah wa But for now, let's just, you know, look at the hadith itself. But the Prophet of Allah doesn't stop there. He goes further. He says, what does our word do? He encourages marriage. Why? Uh, I would want to be the Nabi of the Ummah with the, with the, which has the greatest following. So marriage, you can see, has a, an objective. And that objective is to bring children into the world. That's its objective. Yes, it has other objectives as well. Lowers the gaze, uh, allows us to fulfill our, uh, uh, our um, desires in a halal way in which we're rewarded for. But it's also there to bring about children. Now, the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu is giving, coming from a religious angle in that the Ummah of the, Pro, uh, of the Prophet, the Muslims will increase, more people will be going to Jannah. But it's not restricted there because children benefit us. Yes, there's some in, uh, time that we have to commit, but they can help us in the world. But also that they are one of the three things which can be for us a Sadaqatul Jariah. So marriage is encouraged, and not only is marriage, marriage encouraged, also bringing children into this world is encouraged, and doing tarbiyah of the children is encouraged. But unfortunately, what we're seeing across society, and Muslims aren't safe from it either, is the high and the increasing rate of divorce. And this is happening, and there seems to be some kind of an exponential explosion where more and more people are having marriage breakdowns. Now, marriage breakdowns, we know they are permissible. Yani, divorce is permissible. We know again from the Prophet of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in which he says, Abghadul halali in the lahi talaq. That the most dis detested of permissible acts is divorce. So even though it is not something which is encouraged, in fact, it's something that we, from that hadith, the way it's framed, is something that we should refrain from. So we should exhaust all other opportunities before we actually end up in divorce. If, unfortunately, because it's permissible for whatever reasons, and again, it's not the actual time to go into that, we end up in divorce, then it should be as amicable as possible. Now, we know there will be emotions, there will be anger, people will be upset, but it should be done as amicably as possible. It should never impact on the lives of our children. We have to bear in mind that we as adults are breaking a relationship. We have the coping mechanisms, we know how to deal with relationship breakup. But to our children, this is their world. We're not just breaking a relationship to them, we're breaking their world. As a child, I'm sure you looked at your father and considered him to be like a superman. And nothing was beyond him. He was the strongest man that you knew. He was powerful. He made things happen. He brought food home. That's how you viewed him. And your mother, you viewed her with the woman who gave love with no boundaries, with no lack of of, of care and attention whenever you need it. You now see them as children in a way that you've never seen them before. So your world falls apart. So divorce is very hard on the children. However, it doesn't stop there. Unfortunately, what we're seeing is the couple who are now breaking down are now poisoning the minds of their own children against their spouse. Now, nikah is something which can be broken. Talaq. But the silatul raham, which we're encouraged to keep blood ties, is something which cannot be broken. In fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks very strongly against that for those individuals who break blood ties. 
that child is the person is still the father of that child. The woman is still the mother of that child. Yes, you may not consider her to be your wife. And yes, you may not consider him to be your husband anymore. But those children are still blood related to those people. So you cannot now poison their minds to put hatred into their hearts to start thinking ill of those parents of theirs, whichever it may be. And you try to make a tug of war. And this child now becomes your battleground where you try to take vengeance and and, and fulfill your anger through these children because it damages these children. Seriously, it damages them religiously. It damages them psychologically. It damages them spiritually. It damages them mentally. And then these things go into a physical area. So that's why the hashtag in their shoes and this whole campaign about in their shoes is to bring about an awareness of this matter that's going on. Children have right to both their parents. They need more love, not less.